Hey everyone, Tim here. This video, I want to go over the pros and cons of having a large collection uh, anywhere in the thousands and thousands of movies because like anything, there are pros, there are cons. Let's get to it. The number one pro all the way is selection. Whether I want to go with a remake like Evil Dead or I want to go with an 80s classic like Pity and Pink or I want to travel back to the 1930s with this Myrna Loy classic, I have lots at my disposal, lots of variety, tons to pick from, and I love that. Lots of selection is great. However, with selection also comes the endless looking when you are undecided on what you feel like watching, just standing there in front of the shelves for sometimes as long as a movie. Two hours later. Trying to decide what to watch and end up deciding at the end, I'm just going to watch TV because I can't pick a movie. I have so much to pick from. And I'm going to tell you that happens way more often than I would like to admit that I just end up bailing because I took so long. And I just watch a TV show like A New Girl or Fresh Off the Boat or The Office or something. It's just how it happens. The next pro might come your mileage may vary type of thing, but I like being able to lend my parents movies or because I have so many, I, ha I give away digital copies to lots of movies. I like being able to do that. I have a lot at my disposal to be able to do that. But you, how you handle that might be different. Some people don't want to lend a single thing out, and I totally get that. Sometimes it doesn't return. But I like having that flexibility. My parents kind of think of me as like a local blockbuster, and that's kind of cool. An obvious con, it's plain as day, but space, this stuff takes up a lot of space. It's not small, and especially when you get into big box sets, it all takes up a lot. I'm sitting in a room that is basically all movies and collectibles related to movies, but it's an entire room. And then I have my living room has tons of DVD. And then I have another room that has TV seasons and stuff like that. This stuff is all over the place. It takes up a lot of space. A pro is your collection represents you. When someone comes over your house and they look through and you have... 150 horror movies and there are like stuff you love they get to see your taste what makes you the movie fan you are what do you love that's pretty cool that someone can kind of gauge who you are just based off looking around at what you got a con that anyone with a large enough collection can relate to is sorting movies into the collection whether they be stuff you pulled out because you're going to watch it you pulled it out for I don't know, a stream, a video, to blend them out to someone, whatever the reason is, and then your new release stuff that you've bought, new pickups, all of that stuff requires a ton of work to sort into the collection the larger it gets. The larger it gets, if you go A through Z, you're doing shifting stuff all throughout. It's a pain in the butt the more you get. A pro, and this, is, this could also be a your mileage may vary type of thing, but kind of pride in in your collection, in your setup. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I do just kind of sit in the room and just kind of look around at all the different collectibles I got, the, how I display some of the stuff and what movies I got. I just kind of look around. I just kind of take it all in. I love being in this space. This space represents so much of me, and, and I love that so much. So I, I take I take great pride in, in how it looks, how it's presented, and uh, it's it's me. So yes, pride is definitely a, a pro of it for me. But another con is cost. So you could be the biggest bargain hunter out there, but if you're in this game long enough, you will have spent more on a lot of movies than you could get them later down the road. 90-some percent of movies go down in value very few go up in value so it, there might be something 10 years ago that you bought for five bucks that was a bargain and now that dvd might be sitting in a goodwill for a dollar or 50 cents it's just kind of how it is your how much you spent will compound over time and there will be a lot of stuff that you overspent on but it's just kind of par for the course. It's the way it is. There might be lots of box sets you bought at release that, hey, this might sell out, and it never sold out. It dropped in price. 
you would have to be the best bargain hunter ever to exist to have zero lost money on your collection. Uh, I don't think it's really possible, to be honest. A lot of this stuff just tanks in price. But we do it because we enjoy movies and we just enjoy this stuff. I'm not in this for the cost. I'm not in this for the return on investment. This is not the hobby for return on investment. But as a pro, if you are in this game long enough, you will run across some stuff in your collection that will go up in price. So I guess you could look at that as a pro as well. You will have some rare stuff. You're in it long enough, you'll get rare stuff. And a pro, it's just nice to have a hobby and to continue the hobby just over and over and over and have something to keep building on. I really appreciate the people that curate their collection down to a T and refuse to go over 300 movies, 500 movies. They just want the best of the best. And I appreciate that and think that's really cool. That's great self-control. You want this to be just absolutely you to a T. But you kind of run out of, I guess, stuff to buy and enjoy and new stuff to look forward to, I guess. Part of this hobby is like, oh, excited on new announcements and what am I, which steel books are going to be coming out? Which titles are finally coming to Blu-ray for the first time? All this other stuff that is exciting. But I would imagine if I did curtail it down to, say, 300 movies or something like that, I'd eventually hit a point like, I'm going a long time without really any that I care to, to get. And sure, that saves a lot of money. But at that point, I'm just doing mostly digital and I'm not really in the physical media hobby anymore. It's just kind of... I have my favorite movies on physical media, and that's about it. Uh, so, yeah, I, that's a that's a tough one, kind of. So those are just some pros and cons, in my opinion, to having a large collection. Not just the idea of collecting physical media, but specifically, when you hit certain points, uh, when the collection gets large enough, there are pros and cons all the way. I love all of this, but I would be crazy to deny that there are cons involved. And goodness gracious, the space one is it's a major one. But yeah, I love this stuff regardless. Uh, it, it keeps me going. It's something to look forward to. It's nice having a hobby. Uh, so that is all I have. If I missed any that you think are pros or cons specifically to a large collection, let me know down below. And what do you guys consider a large collection? I don't even know. I kind of I kind of feel like when you hit like, 2000 it starts being a large collection but everyone has wildly different ideas on what large is considered but that's all i got like comment subscribe and i will see you in the next one